Wanda, you've arrived at Wasilla. We arrived, uh, we arrived on time. You know, we got in there, so like we left Friday at 11, we got there, uh, or Monday at 11, we, we got there Friday afternoon. Um, a day, we had, we wanted to be there Friday afternoon, so that Saturday, we could spend a little bit of time going over the scout, uh, meeting people, we still had to do tech inspection. So it was kind of nice after everything had gone on all the way from back from Ohio and all the traveling and making sure we got there on time to actually just kind of take a, a little wine a little bit. Out. It was actually like the one day, except for driving around town, getting running some errands, getting some last minute food and stuff. You know, it wasn't a long uh, mileage day. So um, we got in, met everybody. Everything was great. Um, Scout was looking good. We greased the rear drive shaft and looked it over, you know, added a quart of oil or two and it was ready to go, you know, it didn't, that 3,000 miles to get there was nothing for it. So, um, we started off on day one, we went to the Kinnick Glacier, never been to a glacier before, it's pretty cool, you know, I mean, not, not too hardcore of a day, just a lot of mud holes, water crossings, and then we got to the glacier and, and saw that, kind of blessed the scout with some glacial ice on the hood, you know, for it to never run hot again, right. it didn't work, but anyways, you know. Um, but yeah, that was that was way cool. You that know? was day one. That was day one. Yeah, you know, and I mean, like I said, I'm seeing stuff for the first time I've never seen before. So to, to see this glacier and all that, it was just, you know, it's like some of the wildlife I've never seen a moose before. You know, for instance, live. So, you know, seeing a lot of this stuff for the first time and just really sucking in the sights. So how many are in your group? There's uh, there was about 22 vehicles I want to say overall between the sponsors, the magazine guys, the cronies as we call them. They're the usual helper guys and the readers they they pick out normally about three readers this year they had five uh with being alaska and being the you know the 20th anniversary they, they needed some inside help so they had the winnegers and so you were led by trucks by trail uh, correct, leaders correct and, and honestly that was pretty cool you know it was like they're our tour guide and all we had to do was was follow and, and keep gas in our rigs and and keep up you know and if we needed help they helped us. Did you feel safe the whole time? Oh, absolutely. What a what a talented, just high end group of guys those around. Didn't matter how hard I beat this thing, I got it stuck, and I got it stuck a lot. I'll admit. Um, they were there to, to school me, and, and and I need to be schooled on mud wheeling. I was really out of out of my element in the mud. I. Uh, not much mud experience. I mean, we have lots of that back east. I could have yeah, given you some yeah, pointers. Yeah. I'm a rock crawler guy. <laughs> yeah. you know, I go up the Rubicon and stuff, and, and that's that's what I like to do. And that's that's mud is a whole thing. different animal. Mud is a whole different animal, absolutely. So it, it took me till about the fourth, fifth day before I figured out what what gear. But to you got the hang of it. Oh yeah, we eventually got the hang of it, and uh, you know the scout kept uh, you know put up with me until we could figure out what gear to get that thing in that that did the best. So but, finished day one. So yeah, day one, you know, we just said we, we uh, it was just walk to the glacier and back. We found a big mud hole for guys to get stuck in, took a lot of pictures and sightseeing. And, you know, they wanted it to be kind of easy just to make sure if anyone was going to have a problem, uh, let it be on that one because we were so, actually still hoteling it that same time. I was going to say, is it, so the, the first day was in, out, and back in. Correct. We went out. It didn't Wasilla, do that back, the whole time. Back, no. It no. moved around. Correct. Okay. So we started, ended up in Wasilla that first day. Which was good. It gave some guys. We did have a couple, not us, with our Falcons, and nobody with Falcons, but a couple flat tires. This one sharp rock had, had cut a couple sidewalls with some guys. So immediately, here it is, day one, and they already got to start looking for a spare. You know, they still got a, you know thousand miles plus to go. Wow. So, so we were back in Wasilla, hoteled it again, and then we left the next morning. This is day two. Correct. Okay. And we we headed out. Uh, to uh, I should have brought my list on this. So I apologize, but it's okay. We headed out and, and we went uh, up to some trails out to the tundra where we're just you know wheeling for forever. I mean, as far as you can see, it, it was really like kind of a recreational land and that hunters also use. Um, so we wheeled out there and found some good mud holes, you know. And and this was the first time they said, "Hey, this is a mandatory mud hole." So I was like, Gotta go that way. Yeah, you know, so you had to go through it. And this was the big mud hole, you know, the biggest, hardest one yet. So I'm watching guys as they go through it. And these guys with 38s and 40s are, you know, they're having a hard time or having to get yanked out. You know, the old voodoo ropes are getting pulled out and stuff. And Smitty built winches to pull these guys out. So um, I was kind of in the middle of the pack. And I'm kind of looking, I'm like, you know, they push quite a bit of mud. I see some hard pack in there. So, you know, the... First day is being in the mud, and like I said, not 
still not knowing what ratio was was best. I had four high first year, jumped in the hole, just goosed the throttle, and that scout just launched through it, launched out of it, hit the second hole, launched through it, out, and boom, we're out. I was I was so uh, worried about it. About you probably heard applause stuff. in your head. Oh, people were just going. <laughs> that sounded great. That was awesome, you know. And, and yeah, they were cheering us on. Chad's over there. I asked him, "Did you get on footage?" He goes, "No, I was too worried you're going to break it." And I was like, "Ah, oh, bummer." I go, "Don't worry, I was too worried." I go, "I forgot to hit the the uh, film button on my camera, and I was hoping to film yeah. it." So, anyways, the camera guys got it. We'll have some. There'll be some footage uh, shown later on on it, but. Uh, no, the scout did great. So I was like, cool, you know. I mean, and like I said earlier in the day, we had that ignition module problem, and up up to then, this, you know, we placed it. Scout was doing just fine. So uh, that second night, we camped out next to a river, okay, um, just middle of nowhere. It was just awesome, you know, having the river just going by. And so what's the, what's out. the weather like? Is it cold? Or? Um, it was pretty fair. It's been it was pretty dry summer for Alaska. Um, that particular day, the next morning, it was cold. It was mid twenties, so we were a little frosty. A little frosty, you know. People woke up a little chilled, but we, we got up, warmed up. Did they have campfires and? Yeah, they had little campfires and stuff. Nothing nothing too big or anything like that. You know, keep it under control. Being still like the drier weather, but um, you know, we loaded back up and started heading out and did a lot more wheeling. Now we're on day three. So on day three, yeah, just kept wheeling. Kept, you know, uh, they were taking us through some big. This is where. You know, we're going this way, and it's muddy. Uh, endless bogs. Um, just got stuck a lot. Like I said, I just got to just go in because I was in the wrong gear and just sink. You know, not enough RPM or speed. I was still learning it. You know, these guys were teaching me and stuff. So I was asking questions. I, I, I don't hesitate to ever ask questions if, if I need to learn something. And so I was picking these guys' brains, and they were trying to assist me, you know. Well, one of the things, you know, us mud guys in the East and Midwest, we don't like to get stuck, so it's kind of like, uh, how, how was it when you were stuck? Was it a, a bummer and then it took hours to get you out, or you know, you got right, they got you right no, out? They got these guys from the east, man, and they're just you know, they're on top of it. They're, they're so you weren't stuck anywhere for long, no, okay, no, got the picture. No, they, they'd help you out, you know, they'd tell you to do this, that, or let me just give you a tug, and they'd. You know, they pull you out. It, it wasn't too big of a deal at all. You know, I mean, it, and that was a good feeling. At least, don't ask if I get stuck. I'm not out here not, you know, screwed or anything like that. Right. They're, you know, they're all right. Do this. Well, do they that. want to keep things moving too. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's a schedule to keep. You know, and we needed to be that next night at a uh, at a hotel in town, and we got in there pretty late in the evening. By the time we got in there, late late evening. A hotel after mudding. So, what the hotel think of that? Or. Uh, I mean, you know. I don't think the hotels minded as much as the car wash did. I'll bet. Because you know, some of the guys would almost wash their vehicles. You know, any yeah. opportunity they got, well, yeah. kind of keep their logos sure. and stuff exposed. I didn't care. I, I went the whole just week left without. It. Badge of honor, mud. Yeah, it's still not. Honestly, this is just the pressure washing it got in Alaska. I have yet to actually give this thing. There's still a lot of moose poop and. You know, you want to you want to smell it for a while. Yeah, that's, that's know, Alaska. Exactly, still smells and reeks of Alaska for sure. So, so we stayed in Glen Allen that that uh, third third night, and then headed to. We're on the, day four. So now we're on day four, and we get up, and they say, "Okay, we're doing a couple hundred road miles. Top off your tanks. Let's go." Um, we held back for a few minutes, hit the auto parts store to get a couple spare ignition modules since we burned up both spares. You were able to do that and then catch up? Yep. Or, yep. You so know, they were shocked at They how told you where you... Up. I didn't lie. I said, how hey, did you know where to go? Um, they just told you to meet somewhere. And awesome having the radios. Okay. You know, because mm -hmm. I'm always fully in communication. Gotcha. So, you know, and they were telling me it was, it was a good 20, 30 mile stretch before the first turn off. And um, we caught up to them right at the turnoff. They, gotcha. They're already caught up, and while I told you, the scout does 98 miles an hour, and we're <laughs> using every bit of it to catch up. You know, sorry, Alaska. So, uh, <laughs> um, so we caught, we got caught up, and boy, that was the day of the dust. Um, we had, you know, that couple hundred miles, probably 150 of it was was just dust. dust. And again, it hadn't rained a lot in Alaska, and our front to back, we're four miles apart. You could see, you know, a plume of, smoke, of dust coming out. For miles um, you were about to say smoke well it was probably like smoke. well there was a lot of smoke in the yeah. area too regardless from the fires they've been having but but yeah the plume of dust was just crazy I mean, everybody was 
you know, I felt I felt sorry for the open cabin guys, where at least we were able to roll up the windows and uh, turn on the air conditioning. So, <laughs> oops, so, that's cheating. But the weather was was really nice. You know, we got up and we ended up at the town of McCarthy, at the what's called the Kennecott Mine. It's a copper mine. Um, McCarthy is kind of well known. If you see movies about gold mining or mining in general or uh, red books, McCarthy's mentioned a lot. And um, it's still pretty much in its original state. They're trying to preserve it. It's is really cool to go actually see something I've, I've heard about and read about in the past. So this was, there, was, there, this was the hundred, couple hundred mile stretch of road. So Correct. I know and from my experience uh, on and off roading and being in a uh, rally like that, the air lockers were an advantage for you. Correct. Did the guys with Detroit's and the clunky rock, you know, lock locking discs have trouble with that part of the? No, not really. No. I mean, it had, everybody was fine, but it was like, how much nicer was your drive because of stuff? Like you that. had the air, the air lockers, two right. good advantages. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, and CD stereo. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And a refrigerator. And a refrigerator. Wow. So, I mean, no, the Scouts is, you know, it, it's set up for, for this kind of trip. Okay. But it was kind of what we call a road day, you mm -hmm. know, seeing McCarthy. Was so that's day four. Day. Correct. All right. Uh, we got back from McCarthy, went all the way back. Technically, we backtracked to Glen Allen. And then, I'll be honest with you, just somewhere north of Glen Allen, they had a spot picked out for us. We wheeled out to it. And we probably didn't pull into camp till like 10 o'clock that night. Um, it was dark and it stays light in Alaska till at least 9 30 10 so yeah it was a long day we did a lot of driving and then like I said to wheel in it at, at dark at nighttime was, was pretty cool you know we got in there we set up camp um, I don't think too many people hung up too long like I said they were getting pretty, pretty tired. tired yeah so then we got up for uh, day five we were, on day five we like I said we had camp we got up we headed through uh, the Nolly Highway, and we, we kind of saw like the outskirts, the, it's the old original highway through Denali, mm -hmm. and we took that all the way across uh, westward to, I don't remember which highway, but we ended up in the town of Healy, and Healy's kind of well known um, due to this book and true story about this guy, I think his name was Christopher McCandless, who had uh, left a, a well you know, he came from a, a well family, you know, very rich, and he just wanted to get away, and he hiked the country, and he went and up to some international school bus, of all things, and uh, he had crossed a couple rivers, and when he went to make a long story short, he couldn't cross, ate the wrong plants out there, uh -oh. tried to survive, and, and anyway, some moose hunters found him, so in the town of Healy, there's like a bus that, that looks just like it, and, you know, to let kind of people know, so... We ended up coming into the Healy, and we stopped, and we set up camp in a campground, and then we loaded back up in our, and here it is, it's like afternoon time, mm -hmm. and now we're going wheeling, okay? Is this six or five, day five? This is day, uh, uh, this is day, let me think here. Feels like day we're five. on six. We're still, we're still on, on five. five, okay. So day five, yeah, you know, okay. we, we went through Denali, and then Healy, we camped, set up camp, and then we, we went to go wheeling. And boy, we got into some deep swamps and tundra, you know, I mean, just, just some huge hell holes. And I got the scalp freaking buried and popped the bead on the tire, you oh, know, no. and we were stuck. But man, these guys that are with us are just good. The you know? pros, it sounds keep like. Keep you calm, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, there's no problem, hey, bump your winch, Let's, we're going to do this, and then I'll tell you when to give it a little gas. I mean, they just, they know how to just get you unstuck like that. You listen to them, no problem, you know. We get out, Chad and I, we, we put the spare tire on, and, um, you know, it's like, man, I mean, this was the hardest day. This was hard. This was stressful, too, you know, just getting through this stuff. And I'm still figuring out what gear is working good. I'm still, at this point, you know, day by day five, I was in four low, second gear, trying to do this stuff, okay? And um, so we get unstuck, and we get the spare on, and we're going, and we're going through these, these deep water holes up to the hood. And the scouts chug in, and the check engine light's coming on because we've swamped the O2 sensor. And, and, you know, it's running and misfiring and just running terrible. And we were about to give, you know, about to stop where we were at at a certain point. And, you know, radioed, and those guys are like, hey, man, you know, you're almost there. Let's just, just a little bit further. We're, we're here, you know. And, and I'm glad we did because that way we're able to say we did every part of it. And we did. We, we went to the end. It was cool being at the river. 
Um, it was an uncrossable river. This was one of the rivers Christian McCallums couldn't mm -hmm. couldn't cross. So we got there, took pictures, and then we had to get out. And like I said, it was hell getting in there. And then you had to get out. <laughs> and then we had to get out. So yeah, so we, we keep crossing these deep water holes. Scout's still angry. You know, check engine light. It's burbling because it's running so fat at this point because it's, it's just not running right. You know, like I said, we, we had swamped it pretty good. Um, heading out there again, I, I'm still second gear, four low, and I got it stuck so they go to pull me out and they everyone's pointing to turn this way and i'm trying to turn and i'm winching at the same time and all of a sudden i hear this bang uh -oh. and i'm like oh man i go i think i just broke the, the front end or something i go hey check my hubs so mm -hmm. my hubs are my weak link i want mm -hmm. it that way the locking hub breaks easy to replace right. you know i got these rcb shafts i've got air arb air locker everything's top of the line if something else breaks in there it's going to be some work so they look and they say i don't see anything wrong and i'm like oh that means i probably broke the ring and pinion or something I'm like whatever so anyways I, I realize you know they say hey back up get your tires turned right first and then you know winch and we got out and by then i i started i think i got stuck one more time and then i went from second to fourth gear damn the scout started moving through the mud you know, so yeah. I'm like, this is the gear I need. You can't run low go, gear in mud. Correct. I was you able cannot. to go fast enough when I yeah. needed to, but slow enough when right. I needed to to keep control. And I found the gear. And I was finally after that, I was zipping through the mud holes, right? I'm like, finally, it's getting dark. Um, start pulling off the trail where the trail's starting to normalize, so to speak. And my steering wheel's like this. I'm like, uh oh, something's up with the steering. So, again, the front end felt fine. I thought I broke the front end, and the front end was fine i'm like okay it's pulling fine i don't hear it chucking or nothing cool so we, we get out to where we're about to air up tires i look steering box bolt broke sticking out this far i'm like oh wow you know because i was so far hard left it just it just overcame a bolt which i was glad it broke a bolt not a box which i had a spare of anyways believe it or not so um so yeah so we broke the steering box bolt uh fortunately camp was just down the road so we just went carefully luckily on two bolts back to camp and we had our work cut out for us because the trip, you know, day six, we're, we're leaving first thing in the morning and we had some road miles to do. So we didn't have that size bolt. That was like the one bolt I didn't have. Fortunately, guy had a, uh, Vern Simmons had some grade eight all thread, some lock nuts. So you know, I had my little cordless sawzall. We cut a piece of all thread, got it tightened up on there. Um, daily, we were almost daily. We were pulling the locking hub dials off, making sure there was no water intrusion to preserve the wheel bearings and stuff. And uh, just did, you know. Then we had to start diagnosing the fuel injection. And I was texting Bill Hamilton. You know, I mean, he's, he's right there. Service. He's right there. You know, here I am. I mean, it was 11, 12 o'clock. It was near midnight, and I'm texting Bill. And uh, I think he'd already gone to bed for the night. But bam, the next morning, I mean, first thing, he's like, "What do you need?" Okay, you know, I called him. He told me what, what it was. Um, I didn't, again, have a Sparrow 2 sensor. Uh, and I was so tired. I'm like, Bill, I can't remember which two prongs it hit. He walked me through it real quick. I gave him the code numbers. He told me what to replace. You know, he goes, all right, you got map sensor code. Changed the map sensor, which I had. And uh, that was, wasn't the problem. It was the O2. So, uh, again, we were able, the way they work, it worked out pretty great. Because that, so day six, we started off at the uh, only coal mine in Alaska, which was right there in Healy. We didn't have to go far. We went, we toured this awesome coal mine, learned all about that. Once we got back, the auto parts store was open. I was able to grab an O2 sensor, install it. I didn't have an O2 sensor socket, so I ran back in there, uh, told those guys that behind the counter what an O2 sensor socket was and found it, you know, and went and put that on and the scout was running perfect again so we kept up with the group that was another road day on day six um, we ended up at the uh, transportation museum of alaska interesting and, yeah pretty cool seeing that um so again it was six was a road day saw this this awesome museum saw some internationals in there that were part of alaska's transportation history saw some old planes old trains all sorts of stuff saw some farm all tractors take a little break yeah it was nice and then uh, we were back in Wasilla again. Okay. Um, 
So we had camped for two nights in a row, and then we were back to hotel on it. So it was kind of nice to catch a shower and some porcelain and all that, as, as Trent would put it. <laughs> and uh, got up the next morning, and we went up a local trail that was really probably the funnest trail because it actually had rock crawling, some mud holes, but that had rock something crawling. in your wheelhouse. Correct. So I felt at home, and then here we are, day seven. I I could. You know, I was starting to take some of the harder lines and just really enjoying myself because, man, we're on day seven. It's like we're going to survive it. We're on seven. Seven. You know, so we do this awesome trail. We get up to the top. There's, uh, it, it was the site of an old B-29 airplane crash. You could still see some fragments of the plane. And uh, once we saw that, we, we uh, turned around and, and... There's a deer over there. Oh, uh, we got a deer? <laughs> yeah. yeah pretty cool the anyway the natural pets so we uh we, we get done with the trail early and they decided to take us through hatcher pass which is an awesome scenic tour you know we get up on top and and just you know last road day you know they, they threw that in and it was cool because it's like hey we we're going to do it the day before on six but we weren't able to and they're like we thought hey we're finishing early on day seven ah cool i'll go wash the scout get a little bit of head start on it but when they said that, I'm like, let's go. I mean, I'm here. Show me Alaska. Right. You, you know, take advantage of it. Take you're advantage there. Of it. I'm not just on a cruise where you're just kind of going in and out, you know. Right. Like, no, I, I'm uh, I'm here in the midst of Alaska with one of my favorite vehicles that I've owned forever. And, dude, you know, let's let's do it. So it was great to get in that extra road miles, see that extra part. And uh, we made it back to the hotel that night. We had a great celebration. And, um, you know. Then it was so that was the ultimate adventure, but it wasn't quite over yet. We still had to yeah, get home. Right. Well, before you go there, if you don't mind, I'd like to throw in a little story of my own, just a little short story. Sort of ties into your mud experience. The opposite for me, 1988, 89, you know, I'm a young kid, go to Colorado in an SS2. Uh, I'd go off roading with Rod Phillips, get him up scout for the first time. And my brother Bob is with us, and he's in Rod Scout ahead of us, filming me. And I, we every time we come to a river crossing, I hit it hard and fast. And Rod, you could hear Rod on the, why does he hit those water crossings so fast? And Bob goes, it's because he thinks mud's in the bottom of them. And of course, you know, I didn't know any different. Yeah. So here, you know, the yeah. opposite. Uh, you you got to learn different the terrain, the, the wheeling, yeah. you know, the rock yeah. is crawling, the the mud is all different. So it is very different. I learned, you learn. Yeah, correct. You know, I feel next time I hit some mud, I'm gonna feel a lot. You'll more You'll know what to do. Yeah. So fourth you know, gear, four low, <laughs> peanut butter jelly. And it's amazing. Yeah, that's what four one four is. What we came up with. Fourth what gear, you're lucky four about, and, and I am too, is and think about it. There are so many people in our part of the country and then so many people in your part of the country that only do the kind of four-wheeling that we do. That we do. Yeah. And the other is interesting, too. So, you know, you guys got to get out on the other, in, in other parts of the country Absolutely. and try other you things. The other you have to do that. You see the scenery because it's different everywhere you go. You got to do it. Yeah. So, okay, you're on day seven or is this eight? Well, day seven, the adventure's over. We survived. Right. We, we, we made every mile that every had to make. I was proud of this rig. It, you know, nothing major had, had failed. Just stuff, little minor things that we were able to overcome. Um, you know, we had reset the bead on the, on the tire and had our spare. It's still on the back, you know. And uh, But we got up Sunday morning, um, heads throbbing. You know, like I said, we, we celebrated a little quite well we, we, we well deserved <laughs> and uh it wasn't champagne i'll bet no it wasn't it was just quite a few beers but uh but anyhow uh, we got up spent an hour and a half at the car wash getting the mud off of it underneath it as much as we could well, there is a safety issue you're going to go home on the highway right. and, and you gotta you can't drop mud and you well, gotta be able to see yeah. I, I don't think the border would allow me to cross with the amount of mud on there due to environmental reasons and that was my biggest thought you know so you know i just you know that'd be interesting one of you, you guys that lives up there won't you try that and let us know yeah what it's like to cross the you border cross with mud a pile of mud on your vehicle yeah but, it, uh, we'll give you an email to send us the film yeah so we got you know after cleaning it uh, it was time to check the scout over check the diffs for water mm -hmm. um, top off the oil uh, again earlier in the week we had cleaned the air filter so it was it was all right 
Um, got to the left front tire, jacked it up, spun it. Oh boy, it sounded horrible. So he squeaking and it just yeah, the bearings were, were was it wobbly. It was a little wobbly and, and the bearings were, were done. We we'd gotten water intrusion into that side. So fortunately, I had a spare set of wheel bearings. So we took that side apart, uh, repacked some some of the new bearings. Um, one thing I wish if I was a little bit smarter and thought ahead of, I would have packed my bearings ahead of time that I had for spare. So when I got there, I didn't have to do it then. It would have been nice and sealed. Put it go. Right in, put it in. Put go. it in and go. So we repacked that side. I got to this right side, and it was worse. It actually spun the race on the inside severely. Fortunately, I had a good used hub assembly with me, with bearings already in it. So I knocked the rotor off, put it on the new on this replacement hub, put it on there, and you know that was the two biggest problems. The other thing I I found under the scout was on uh, day five when we were having you know in those heavy swamps. Um, at one point, I heard some serious thunking, kabunking going on underneath there. I thought I broke a drive shaft, and Chad was telling me that I had a stick that like got wedged under the scout and actually like pogoed me up. And, and anyways, I found this like three inch log stuck under my scout, huh. leaning right next to the fuel pump and the fuel filter. Could have took it out. Could have not. Could have ripped the wires off. Could have done uh. anything it wanted to could have just ripped the whole fuel system off in the middle of that swamp and why it didn't i don't i'll never know but it just got in there broke off because of the slider and there it was i was like holy cow and i kind of worked it and it was stuck in there i said you know what and what was funny was my fuel pump been getting a little noisy mm -hmm. at times especially on a long fuel run right um was perfectly quiet after that kind of like it scared some sense in yeah there. well so anyway maybe we found that underneath there and was like, Whew, okay, well, cool, you know, didn't take up fill that. That was fine. We greased the rear drive shaft and, um, you know, started heading home. We made it back uh, on that Sunday to uh, Toke, Toke, I think it's called, called T-O-K. Um, it, was, it was only about two, three hundred miles. We didn't make it super far. Was still pretty tired. We'd gotten Just home. Just home. We get on the road till two yeah. o'clock after making repairs and all that. So we made it that far and then... Um, the next day was a long 800 mile stretch. That's when we went uh, from Toke all the way to Dease Lake in British. So we went all the way through Yukon into British Columbia. And then from there, the next day we made it to, I wanna say some town south of St. George. Um, probably don't even know what town. Not far from the border. Um, far enough, a few hundred miles yet from the border. And then the next day we made it to uh, well, I think we made it to Oregon that next day and then got up and made the final stretch home. So it was, you know, like I said, a long 18 days. Um, no real problems coming home. Um, the, the only thing that happened was, we, of all things, oddly, we I broke a, an alternator mounting bolt just out of the blue snap. And so the alternator went yeah, wobbly. Yeah, all of a sudden uh, we started hearing the belt squeal and the voltage drop. So fortunately, and what's weird about this Scout, 99% of the time when it breaks, it breaks in a convenient spot for you. It's so, being nice. Being nice. This They're scout loves you. Pulled right over. I actually happened to have the exact bolt I needed. I put it in, and uh, that was really, you know, the, the only problem we had, if you want to call it that. Um, oddly enough, I've broken that same bolt yet again since coming home. Um, I've also had that ignition module fail again since kit coming home. Um, oh, don't we know it? How many did you put in? And I put in two out there, so that was a third. So and we've uh, learned to Bill's buy worked on it. You not know, we're, we're Napa walking. kind or what? Is, what was it? Uh, yeah, we had some couple of, of uh, Napa branded ones that, that unfortunately, is my spares when I brought in Alaska that uh, misfired when I put them on uh, after it died coming home here. And then the other odd thing, uh, you know, like I said I had Bill here and he was just doing some some data logging and. He was with another friend, Joe Torres, and they were they were they took it on the Ice Sarah Fall Rally's uh, a little mile trail run, and uh, the front leaf springs broke. He just had it. Just had it. It so just had it. I heard some clunking mm -hmm. back up in Alaska, and I looked underneath this thing with my creeper. So for this thing, like I said, to survive the trip, we pounded it hard. Honestly, the trip up, we pounded it pretty hard because the vehicle is fresh and those frost heaved roads, and it was you know. It landed kind of hard a few times, and, and it worked the suspension. I mean, I knew coming home before even getting home that suspension was, was worn out. Uh, shocks need to be replaced. Sure. So 
so after getting home, you know, I mean, that some of the things we had to do to it was, um, you know, change the oil, of course. I mean, we'd gone a long time. I replaced the main K&M filter on it because it had gotten some holes in it. It was done. Um, didn't do anything with the front wheel bearings or anything. Uh, changed the front and rear diffs, the fluids, and mm -hmm. uh, the rear brakes and parking brake, even though they were brand new before the trip, needed to be replaced again. They got mud in them and just kind of tore that tore that up. That uh, aged them real quick. Yeah, yeah. The oh. fresh set of spark plugs, I was running so much octane booster in it. It, it kind of just coated the plugs in, in a red film. So we replaced that and... Uh, that was pretty much it, you know. I've been driving it ever ever since, you know, a few days here and there, and uh, we'll be taking it on the Rubicon here in a couple of weeks. I'll we'll get some fresh springs up front, and and this weekend, and then we're gonna go do some Rubicon. So, uh, guys or gals, they probably wonder, um, okay, you're going to Rubicon, and then versus Alaska, uh, brings me to the parts list. What is there any difference? Would you take more to Alaska because oh, it's so isolated than the yeah, Rubicon? Absolutely. What? What? Did you take? What's the parts list? So the parts I took to Alaska, and these are stuff I've never carried before. A complete steering box. In case you break the, I've seen sector shafts and boxes break out there. You're not going to find that in Alaska. So I brought one of those. Um, again, the wheel bearing hub, the wheel bearings. We're talking some weight in the back of the truck. Correct. Correct. We were pushing some weight. I really wish I was able to get a weight on the scout with us in there. We were literally packed to the ceiling. You know, there's a domestic fridge, there's food, there's, you know, I've got spare front axle shafts in there. Uh, that's something I'd want. Several locking hubs, because that was, I planned on breaking them. And like I said, the drivetrain wise, the biggest drivetrain failure we had was a broken steering box bolt and a spun bearing race. So, drivetrain held up just fantastically. Um, what else on the parts list? Um, with the handle, with the fuel injection, uh, and because I have spare parts, I, I did, and I knew we were doing water crossings and all sorts of stuff. So I did keep a spare throttle body, fuel pump, you know, map sensor, O2. Uh, like I said, I, I packed the wrong O2 sensor, but I did, you know, would, it would be a normal thing to pack. Ignition module. Those are those are some of the things I packed there for that. Uh, header gaskets, which which the that was one of the things I did replace when I got home. I should have, have to on the trip. I should have done it on the trip up Alaska because it was starting to get noisy. But I, you know, we just kept going. Boy, by the time we got home, it was pretty loud on one side, which I should have because it affects the tune. What about belts and hoses? Uh, same belt, same hoses. Extra, you know, just one extra set. Uh, yeah, I, yes, correct. Actually, I'd replaced the hoses before I left. I kept the old hoses. Put them in. And uh, I ordered up an extra spare set of belts. Kept them with me. Kept the spare alternator. Um, with me, um, like I said spare wiper blades. Uh, say again. Wiper blades. Uh, no, but I should have. You should have. Mud, yeah. I definitely could have used some fresh blades for the trip home when we hit rain. Yeah, but those are some of the main parts. Um, when I come out here on the Rubicon, what's that parts list? Um, or take away what, what you didn't? You didn't need the starter and the. Yeah, the, I mean, I probably wouldn't take an alternator with me. Uh, that steering box. The steering box I probably wouldn't take with me. Um, but I'd still take like a front axle shaft, you know, I'd still take shafts and locking hubs. With what about safety long. equipment on either trip? What, what kind of safety equipment uh, do you well, recommend and what did you take? Well, roll cage, um, the fire extinguishers, I actually have a total of four in there now. Four, that's and great. That's weight, but I'd rather have them than not have them. First aid kit? First aid kit, high lift jack, toe straps, uh... You know, definitely any type of extraction equipment, spare tires, spare gas. Toe straps so, and, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, snatch box. Yep. All that stuff. Gloves, anything winch related there. But for safety, the biggest thing is definitely, you know, uh, having a first aid kit, fire extinguishers as well. Yeah. And so you've got the radios and, and a backup for uh, uh, real emergencies. Um, just so the guys know and some of these fellows that are watching, and gals uh, probably don't go off road much. Would you ever recommend going alone, depending on the terrain? If or? it was the Rubicon, and depending on the time of year, sure. There's a lot of other people out there, and they're glad. But you're an experienced, uh, you know. Still, you know. I'm I talking about a novice alone. guy. Without a winch, I wouldn't go by myself because you get stuck. You're stuck. But with a winch, you have a huge advantage of unsticking yourself as long as you have something to anchor to. So, no. As long as you have some kind of off-roading experience. Correct. 
the novice guy probably. I mean, off to Alaska like that? Heck no, I wouldn't even go by myself still out there. I mean, some of that tundra of roads on, on day uh, two and three, that is miles and miles, hundreds of miles of roads out there. You just get, if you don't know where you're going, you'll get lost and turned around out there easy. So, yeah, you definitely want to go with, with others. And, and it's always nice. If one breaks down, you can always have the other to go out and get, you know, retrieve parts or an emergency or anything like that. So group of threes are usually pretty nice, uh, up to like a group of five. And then after that, it can get a little bit slower traveling. Just for the heck of it, tell us about, there's trail etiquette, too, that a lot of people don't understand. Going up, down, tell us about that. So the guys coming, anyone coming downhill has the right of way. So if, if you're going up and they're coming down, you, you need to back down and let them kind of keep coming down because it's a lot harder for them to back up a hill. Um, definitely on the trail, pack it, pack out what you pack in. No trash. No trash. Police yourselves. Um, and that, that goes for your own human waste. You know, I mean, that's a big, big problem, especially Rubicon Trail, where they get a lot of traffic. A lot of people leave what we call white flowers out there. And uh, nobody likes to come out and pick up someone else's poop. But that's just how it mm -hmm. is. And unfortunately, you know, there's awesome volunteers that go out to clean these trails and do what, do what other people aren't doing, and that's keeping the trails clean and uh, you know supporting the environment out there um, I always say we are the true environmentalists we are paying the fees to go enjoy these places we are recycling old vehicles and keeping them on the trail versus just buying the next thing off the lot that's taking up you know that's having to be made you know might as well take something that's already been made rebuild it and reuse it and um, you know it, it's it's our way of being our environmentalists and keeping uh, taking care of what what been given to us that take a stand to stay save the land yeah, that's the yeah, IH's program absolutely yeah perfectly so, worded. yep Correct. yep so um if somebody wanted information about the ultimate off-road and for peterson's four-wheel magazine uh, is so there what they a, should do is go to fourwheeler.com and go to the events section and you'll see the ultimate adventure is it four-wheeler or four-wheel and off-road it's actually peterson's four-wheel they all came together is the magazine and mm -hmm. four-wheeler is the main network gotcha so fourwheeler.com is the main website for peterson's and uh you go to that section there and again under the ultimate adventure and you'll see all the days uh, trips. They have uh, about two, three minute videos on them that they were doing on the fly. There's some articles about us sponsors, about the readers. Uh, there's more to come. There's going to be, I believe in December, we should have quite a few episodes on Motor Trend TV on Ultimate Adventure. It'll also be on their app uh, usually the week before. Or so it's from what well, We recommend you watch those episodes because we probably won't be editing pictures and things on this, but I mean, you may not get an interview like this and get the first hand. Sure. Uh, of, a, of a driver and, and an adventurer. Um, folks want to ask questions about this truck and need parts, throw that out there, that yeah, website. Just contact sales at ihpartsamerica.com and we'll be glad to help you out with parts wise to, to make build a scout up to, to be as strong and conquer Alaska like we did or just restoration parts. Uh, but again, if you you know have some more questions. What's the phone number over there? It's 530-274-1795. Perfect. And we're uh, open Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 Pacific Standard Time. Do you have anything more to add about the uh, ultimate adventure? Sign up. What are you waiting for? You know, <laughs> I mean, you only live once. You know, I, I really, I tried to actually be a part of Ultimate Adventure years ago. I'd signed up for it. And came very close to uh, making it. Um, uh, another good representative of the ice community, Matt Boken, actually got to go on it, and so um, he had a great time. And then I always, I was going to re-enter and re-enter. Being in the business, it's kind of tough because I wanted to do it personally, not for the business. Um, but when this year I got approached and was told that they're thinking about building a scout, and if I'd be interested in sponsoring, I said, of course, but only if I get to go. <laughs> and, uh, Nice know, carry on. They said sure, and I figured it'd be no big deal. Typically, Ultimate Adventure is held in June, but because of the weather in Alaska, they moved it to August, and so it really made it tough. Like you said, having to be in two places almost. A you had a rough summer. It was a busy summer. Yeah, yeah. So. Glad it's coming coming to an end uh, with uh, the Ice Zero Fall Rally just completing that, and uh, we just have SEMA to do here. And in, in a, uh, I guess under four weeks, we're supposed to be out there just to 
check it out and, and display a customer vehicle. So yeah, yeah cool time. The IH industry is is on a tidal wave right now. Absolutely, um, very popular. Everybody's wanting one. Um, what a great time to be part of this. It's a great time to be alive with International Scouts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I want to thank you for joining us sure, for on me. Inside you bet. IH. You bet. I guess that's going to be our name on Binder TV. And if you want more information about Binder TV, go to www.bindertv.com. Uh, follow us and like us, please, on Facebook. And uh, uh, scouting on. Scout on. Mm -hmm.